Hey everybody, Abdullah Shamari here. Today we're gonna go over financial statements. Let's do it. Make sure to subscribe to my page, crush the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and check out my Patreon link below. You'll get insights into my watch list, my portfolio, my daily readings, as well as instant posts as I buy and sell stocks each and every day. Today we'll be going over how to read financial statements. We'll take it step by step. So today we're just going to focus on the balance sheet and we'll go through a 10K and how to find the balance sheet what the balance sheet contains and try to go through some of the line items that will appear in the balance sheet so that we could all be more educated as far as what the financial statements are telling us and so that we can find the stocks that will be potentially the next 100 baggers. Here we go, we're gonna go over how to read a balance sheet. First off, we need to figure out how to get to those 10K filings. So that's why we're here on scc.gov. It's the Securities and Exchange Commission's website where every public company submits their annual returns, their quarterly returns, as well as information statements. These are called the 10Ks, the 10Qs, and 8Ks, etc. We'll now try to navigate to a specific company's 10K, and then we'll also see 10Qs as well as other filings that the company makes. So first and foremost, we go to this filings, we hover over over it and then we click on company filing search once we click on that then it asks us for the ticker symbol or the company's name so then we type in for example in this case we're going to go over Illumina so we go to Illumina once we go there we can see here it gives us a summary of selected filings or we could go to all filings in this case we're just going to go to the latest 10k so we just go to the 10k annual reports or 10q quarterly reports and we can see here on February 17 2021 they submitted their annual annual 10k for the year ending January 3rd 2021 we click on that and then it takes us to their actual 10k filing and here we're able to then see the components of the company's 10k it has various different sections such as the company's management discussion and analysis which talks about their current progress and what they could potentially do in the future, their consolidated financial statements. And these financial statements are audited by the public accounting firm that has audited them. And we know the big four, Ernst & Young, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Deloitte, as well as KPMG. One of them ha usually audits most of the pub big public companies. There might be other firms that also audit some of the smaller companies. And then it has various other information as far as executive compensation and various attachments to the 10 10K. So our prerogative here is to go to the balance sheet. So here we're going to click on consolidated balance sheets. Sometimes the indexes aren't as good as this one or not as clickable where you can navigate easily. In those instances, you can always default to going to the back of the 10K because that's usually where the financial statements are. So we can see here we have now Illumina's consolidated balance sheets and consolidated means that Illumina is composed of many different entities. So they take all of those entities and they consolidate them into one financial statement. So there's probably Illumina US, Illumina Europe, Illumina APAC, various different regions and various purposes. They have many different legal entities, but when they report their financial statements, they have to consolidate all that information so that they could present it to investors. So here we can see some of these components we've gone over in past videos, but we'll summarize quickly the balance sheet. We'll go over the assets, the liabilities, as well as the equity. So for the assets, quick and easy cash and cash equivalents. We all know this is the cash the company holds and this is just pure cash, not not investments or anything like that. Then we have the company's short-term investments. So these are investments that will mature in less than a year. Anything that matures over a year would be in long-term investments. Accounts receivable, this is money that the company is owed by from other companies. So they're disclosing how much is owed and it's an asset. Next, they have inventory. Obviously, Illumina sells products, so they have inventory that they hold at the end of the year that they weren't able to sell or in preparation for sales for the next year. We have prepaid expenses and other current assets. These are payments that they've made upfront for certain services such as insurance or rent, etc. 
and then it totals the total current assets. These are all the current assets, meaning that cash that's available to the company or that's going to be used within the next year. Next, we'll go over long term assets, which first starts off with property, plant and equipment. This is fixed assets or equipment that the company owns. This could be, you know, machinery in order to build their inventory. This could be leasehold improvements or they might have made improvements to their building. This could be cars that they own, various different equipment and property that the company owns. So they're disclosing it here. These assets slowly depreciate depending on how long they're able to be used. Some are used over 30 years, some are used over five years. So here they're disclosing the net amount that they have after depreciation. Operating lease right of use assets. This one's a key one. These leases usually weren't disclosed on the balance sheets in recent years. Accounting codes have changed. So now companies have to disclose how many leases they have. So these leases are generally all the office buildings that Illumina or other companies have. So they indicate their total right of use asset for these leases. These are the assets that they're leasing. Next is goodwill. This is the overpayment or the premium that the companies paid for various companies that they hold or they acquired in the past. So we can see here they have 532 million in goodwill. Next is intangible assets. These are various trademarks that the company owns. And so they have a value to them. They might have acquired them from other companies, or they might have done evaluation on their personal trademarks that they have. Next are deferred tax assets. So these are basically losses that the company had incurred in prior years that they can offset future taxes with. So that's why it's considered a deferred tax asset because it'll reduce future tax obligations when it's used and then they have various other assets that are in here it could be anything you know it could be a long-term prepaid where for example they've prepaid for something that'll last for three or four years etc so those are those are various other long-term current assets that the company had and then we get to the total assets in the next video we'll go over the liabilities it's a lot of information to digest so we want to go it step by step so these are the assets let me know what questions you have i'll make sure to respond to those we all want to make sure that we're mature and investors and we understand how to read financial statements. So it's important that we learn step by step. And in future videos, we'll also go into deep dives within each of these specific categories so we can really understand them and then also understand what information we can get from the footnote of the financial statements. As always, make money, enjoy life. Peace.